Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode. This is a show where we give you the Christian perspective on current issues happening today. My name's Amina, and let me introduce my co-host, Mimi. Hi, guys. Stefan. Good morning. Sarah. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Joelle. And we have a special guest joining us today, Mr. Tapua. Hey, everybody. How are you doing? Hey, hey, hey. Welcome. Welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you, thank welcome, you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for joining us this morning. How's everyone doing this morning? How are we all doing? We ready for today? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, feeling good. <laughs> That's absolutely awesome. So we're going to jump right into it. Tomorrow is Father's Day, guys. We're celebrating all the dads across the world. We're saying thank you for being involved in your children's yeah. lives. We say thank you for raising the next generation. Yeah. However, with thinking about tomorrow being Father's Day, I can't help but reflect on the role having a dad or not having a dad has played in the people we become in society. With 2.9 million families in the UK being raised by women, it begs the question, are fathers failing society? Do we need fathers to raise children? Wow. Like, what's your thoughts? What's your opinion? Wow, are men failing the family? I feel that's a very that's a very broad topic, but um, I don't think men are failing the family. I feel it's down to how society views men and how we allow society to shape that character of a man in our homes. Um, I feel like the man has very much significance in the house. I mean and in society, whether it be the workplace, but let's talk about the house right now. Um, I feel the man is called to be the head. Um, and what does that mean? I think it's a, I think it's about understanding the role of a man. And it's not just, I mean, there's so many aspects of the man in itself. And it's just about understanding the role, really. I mean, I feel like fathers, uncles, cousins, older brothers, they're there and they, they're they some, I feel like sometimes there is no real guideline as to how you must operate as a man. But I feel like it's one of those ones, as you go along, you pick up, you understand, you learn, and mm. you see things that's not right. And you're like, you know what? I can't, I can't, I can't do it like that. Yeah. So I feel, I feel men are not failing the family. Well, I think the stats say for themselves, when you have, you know, I mean, it's a 2.5 million it's families lot. being, it, that's a lot. And, 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 I think the stat says that there is an issue somewhere. If you're saying, Stefan, that men are supposed to be, you know, the head of the home, um, then you have to ask yourself, why are, are 2.5 million families being raised without the presence of the home and the fact that that man has made that decision to be absent? What exactly is, is now happening in the lives of that next generation? And how is that snowballing to the next generation? generation and right. and the, when we see what we see in society then when you look at stats like that when you say 2.5 million men guys whoa are missing from the home then we can't but help to see that the crisis we see in society is happening because you know the role of the man is missing inside the home so personally i think there is a failure somewhere right. um, and i think that that men have to take a responsibility of that failure um um there are their contributions to why they're failing yes um but i definitely think that we cannot say that there, there is not an issue with with men in society today um and then at the same time you have to look at yourself and think you know what is that cause and how can we fix it you know mm. right. it's it's a Absolutely, good point yeah. he's making because um we've got that many families who are being raised by mothers, which means there are children being raised without fathers. And I'm looking at, has that made an impact on the type of children that are growing up in society today? I mean, we still have an increase of violence. We still have an increase of um, young people hurting each other, killing each other, getting into drugs. And is all of these things, are they? Con can we contribute them to the lack of having a dad in the home, having that male figure that, the, I guess, the dominant appearance of someone who can discipline or take hold of a child who's not just um, and not just the nurturing side of a mother I don't know does not having a dad there produce 
these kind of children? I think there's 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 a lot of different things that are involved in that question and in some of the comments that have already been made. Um, obviously, the 2.5 million stat is, is something that we're referring to, but I think sometimes, you know, yes, that's the headline stat, but beneath that, there might be other elements that are worth considering. So, for example, I grew up without my dad, but that's not because he was a deadbeat. He was just dead. My dad died when I was three years old, so he couldn't be there even if he wanted to. Do you know what I mean? So I'm sure within that 2.5 mil, there are situations like that as well. Um, of course, there are going to be people that, you know, have uh, families broken down for whatever reason, divorce or just relationship breakdown or, or whatever. Um, so I get that. But I think as well, um, in my own experience as an adult, as a father, um, it's relationships can be complicated. Relationships can be difficult. And sometimes, you know, you're in a relationship and for the sake of the children, it's better to walk away from that relationship because that relationship has become so toxic that actually you're doing more harm than good for those children that you're actually trying to bring up. So that's the other side of it as well, where, because sometimes it's easy for us to say, oh, you know, men are irresponsible, men walk away. But sometimes the responsible thing to do is to walk away because you're in a, in a situation where it's starting to get very ugly. And for whatever reason, and I'm not saying this, it's an excuse and it makes it right, but for whatever reason, maybe you don't have the maturity or the wisdom or the understanding or even the counsel at that stage in your life to be able to actually you know, work through your relationship and actually, you know, resolve those issues so you can actually have a good, healthy, solid home. Um, so I think all of those factors come into it as well. But yes, um, there is an there is certainly an element of people that are, you know, unable to to stay and maintain a family for whatever reason. Um, and yeah, we, I think we do need to look at, okay, why is that? Is it because people aren't getting the right counselling? Is it because people are going into relationships or having children I don't want to say too soon because I don't, I, you know, I believe in God's timing and, and I don't think it can ever be too soon in God's timing as such. But sometimes, as I said, maybe people haven't got the maturity, maybe people for whatever reason are ready. Maybe it's finances, you know, maybe it's, you know, people got pregnant when they were still, you know, teenagers or they were still in their early 20s and they weren't quite, you know, ready, you know, whatever that means. Or they haven't got the support structures around them, whether it's, you know, extended family, grandparents, aunties, uncles that can help them to still, you know, maybe carry on in uni or do other things they need to do, but be able to bring up the children as well, which I think if we, sorry, I, f I feel like I'm rambling, but if we look at like former generations, um, a lot a, a lot of our generation, or, or at least we know friends whereby, you know, their parents were studying um, and they would go and kind of stay with um, other relatives or other people like, you know, out in the countryside. Um, and that kind of helped the whole situation. So what do you think, how do you think in terms of like this whole topic, where does the role of the woman also play in as well? Because I feel that, um, you know, there is a reason why we have, God has made us both men and female and to come together in a marriage to raise, you know, 100%. children together, ideally. Yeah. Um, there is a role that we both play equally. Um, and so how do you feel that, I know we're saying, okay, have men failed the family, but do you feel that there's any um, responsibility also on the women as well? Because, you know, we're in a modern society where, you know, women are able to bring home the bacon, they're able to earn the same amount, if not more than men, you know, um, just, like it, just like Amina said, do we need a man in the house? You know, a lot of times where you know, when women have been so successful and maybe for their own self, they've not had the presence of their father in their life. They've not had the presence of that significant um, man that can guide them in a father figure. So for them, they have never seen that example. So they feel like, well, I'm independent. I've got it. I've had these children. The relationship has failed or whatever, but I can hold it up. I can hold my own. So do you think that helps and contributes? Because obviously they also teach that same even if it's just by behavior, they also teach that mm. same principle to their next generation, to their children Definitely. as well. That's so do you think that's also I, I, absolutely, I, men? absolutely, because, you know, when you were saying that, Sarah, I'm thinking of myself and, and my upbringing. I didn't have a, a father in my home, and I saw before me really strong women, like every woman around me was strong. And they, you know, my mom bought a house, you know, in a time where buying houses for black people was not a common thing. She bought a house, she got her degree, she got her master's degree, you know, she held down two jobs. And so in my head, I really wanted to have children, but I literally was letting any brother know, even when I became a Christian, don't play me like that because I will walk with these kids and I would have a damn good life, right, without you. And it was so funny because that mentality 
had such a great effect yes. on my relationship with my husband because I then didn't allow him to be the leader of me because in a sense before I even got in a relationship I was 19 but I was making waves you understand what I'm saying and I had a dream for myself and then by the time we started getting to I was making even bigger waves like so in my head I'm thinking don't ever get it twisted right I don't need you but then imagine how damaging that is for a man yeah, for a relationship yeah. where what we're sitting here and we're thinking we're raising independent women yeah. Well, that message of being an independent woman, right, is damaging homes and generations after you. Now, yeah. am I saying that women shouldn't be powerful? I absolutely are not because we are made in the image of God. I feel like the, the church has to do a better, better um, um, job at sending that message that women can be right. you know powerful we have a voice we can make yeah. changes god has something to do in our lives and it's not just yeah. having a baby and sitting at home you know um but whatever it is you have a purpose but at the same time just because you have a purpose now i might be me a jala outside but when i come to my house i'm damn his wife That's right and so i don't right. come with that boss mentality to my house and to my husband that's something that it took me a while to learn because when we got married I would always think I could leave. But then for my husband, because because wow. I saw the fact my mom left and couldn't, and she was good and survived without a man. And I saw aunties and I heard their kitchen table talks, but then my husband couldn't comprehend that question until one, of the, one day a family member asked him a question and said to him, you know, why do you come home every day? And he said that I don't get that question. That's what you do. You, you, you come home. <laughs> It, it, wow. it was so easy for my right. husband and the, the mentality of walking away was so alien yeah. simply because yeah. he came come from a home where his dad came home every that's single it. day. And when you check his brothers, that's the same mindset. And so there's certain things that are learned and there's certain, certain damages. So I, I, I'm here and I was sitting here in the beginning of my marriage fighting the battle of the generation before me. That's Just it. That one that's it. That's, really That's a very good point because we need to think about the what the Bible says the structure of a home is. Culturally, like Mim was saying, we've adopted that idea of this ain't working. We can get up and leave. Nobody's holding you here. Not even a marriage certificate can keep you in the house anymore. It doesn't mean anything. But when we think of the Bible and what the Bible says about a man, God created men first. He created him first because his role was to be the leader of the house. You can and say the fact again. is, when he created you, you were created to be helped. You need to came. came. <laughs> you, can, you can say that again. Just let everybody let it sink. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think y'all men should be saying that. It's the truth. Men were created first and they were created in a position of leadership. They were given the authority. Yeah. They were given the purpose for that family. Dominion. And when you get married, you come with a wife that comes to help with that vision. And part of the vision is raising good kids, is, is building the family. And when you first look at that's one of the first things God created. And it's not a shame and it's not um it's not a surprise that the devil attacks family and all you have to do is take out the head and all of a sudden everybody else is now rolling on the floor, going in different wayward directions. And that's what society has now taught is okay. It's okay to not know your right path, it's okay not to be led correctly. But what do you think about the mindset of the Christians and how do we impose what God's original plan was for the family? How do we make society see that as Christians? I'll, 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 I'll just go ahead just to say, you know, um, uh, it's really important that we, we as believers get to understand the true identity of what the home is. Right. You know, because we, we, I think we, we bring in so much cultural, traditional things that... Mm -hmm. Don't always abide by the word of the, the word of the word of God, you know. And um, it looks good. Still, it seems to have worked, but it's still is not producing what Christ has showed us and what the Bible has told us it will produce. So it takes us as believers to actually get to know what is my role as a man according to God. You know, my, 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 I work for God firstly. Then I now, you know, con dominate in my in the in the realm of my family, and then building up a family and and making that to replicate heaven, you know. And that's um, it's 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 a balance that believers now need to just do a lot of re-educating on, on many other things, but in the home, it's something that we need to do a lot of re-educating on and find but out I, exactly I, how do we build that. I I think that's what what you're saying, Joe. That's a thin line between that that 
that's a product of the thin line between the church and the world and how culture mixes mm-hmm. with the church as well. Because I feel like we are very influenced by the culture of the world. And so, so for yeah, example, sure. you know, um, you, you, you take, for example, now, I, I remember many years ago, you know, Beyonce had that song, Irreplaceable, and all, all the ladies were walking around saying, listen, John, if you play with me, Beyonce said you can bounce, right? And we had that mentality, right? Meanwhile, Beyonce is sitting in that house as Mrs. Carter. Now, she told you she's Beyonce knows, but her name is Mrs. Carter. <laughs> and all manners of stuff was happening in the house. While you were stacking up your husband and telling him to move, she was building herself and a future for her children with Mr. Carter. And so it's, it's so important. And when you look at... When you look at how so many women got a because and I, and I have this thing about one liners, how a whole movement can be formed because of a one liner and all the women felt so great. But nobody actually paused to see about the consequences of the hype that they were bringing into their home and how I think that that thin line before that we have the culture of the African homes. But in our generation, we don't have the culture of the African homes influencing us as Christians. We have the culture of the world or uh, um, and the culture of what's popular and so you see that everywhere because women are being lifted up and i think that lifting up women is great but no one says that you have to lift up women at the expense of pulling down or at the expense of men and And i think that is a culture now we keep doing that and we believers you hear women say in your church all men are dogs i don't know what man you see but my husband is not a dog come on on, that's the mindset that we have in the church you know you're right you're absolutely right and i feel like that's where that's that's where it's gone now where to the fact that the, the man is now under severe pressure to perform because like well if the woman's so strong then where do i see myself and it's not about we're not dealing about egos yes a man has egos and yes we do have egos but let, let's let's put that aside for a minute the bible called the man to be the head of the house and mm. i feel as the head and the covering it doesn't mean you must abuse the authority or the position mm. as a man in your house yeah. I believe it's about providing, uh, providing yeah. that security and leading your exactly. household. I mean, it, yeah, it's about leading your household. So whether, whether that be, all right, I, I, I may not be the breadwinner, but guess what? I'm going to lead my house to prayer. I'm going to lead my house and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk upright that my children can see. You know what I mean? I might not be able to give them everything. But again, it's like that whole social module is, is pressured the man to perform to a certain way. To, to, yeah. to look a certain way and to act a certain way. And some of those certain ways are not natural to them. So like I was saying, like we're based we're basing this on a Christian on a Christian theory, or when I say theory of, of the way we are as Christians. And I feel like as a guy, there's there's nothing wrong to say like God, you know what, I don't know what I'm doing. Like I never mm-hmm. I, you may you may not have been raised with a dad. You may have been raised with your dad. Like but I don't know what that looks like. It's about kind of having that vulnerability in God. To know that, you know what? I wasn't raised with my dad. I wasn't, I didn't know what to do. I didn't see my dad come in every day. He came in seldom times or whatever. But it's about acknowledging that. Because I feel like sometimes we allow, Mimi talked about that cycle. We allow that cycle to continue. So because I didn't see my dad, that means I'm absent as well. No, bro, you need to fix up. You need to be, mm. you know what I mean? It's, one of, it's, it's a harsh reality, but it's one of those ones. And I say this because, I mean, both my parents are still married. I grew up with both of my parents. And on the flip side, I could see I could see why certain things happen, but I feel like that social that social pressure is definitely there. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think you, made a, you made a great point, Stefan. Um, ladies, I beg, give us a chance. Like, <laughs> half the time, we don't know we don't know what we're doing. Oh, bro, we're just trying to, we're trying to thing. We're winging it. Like, just give us a chance. Give us a bit of patience. Yeah. Like, give us a bit of understanding. Be our help. Like. We're meant to be the leader. We're called to be the leader. We're trying, but half of the time we ain't got a clue. And by the time we get the clue, it's years down the road. So yeah, man, give us a chance. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's an important. It's an important point because we we we're, we're visual learners. We go by what we see, and sometimes the things that we see are not um, productive, or it's not. It's no longer relevant in the family that we are bringing up ourselves. So there's this need to be um, adaptable, to be able to say, okay, this, although this is what my dad did, my family, the family I'm raising now, I may need to turn up to more of the sports days and the um, teacher meetings. I may need to turn up to a little bit more of them because I know my dad wasn't there, but that doesn't mean I now have to keep that going. It's no longer relevant. I don't have that work 
um, commitment that I might not be able to turn up. I, I have the time. Mm. But the worst thing to do is have the time and then still not turn up. It makes you question, like, what are you mm. doing? Yeah, that's, that's not what our family needs. <laughs> I, I like I like I like what you're saying, Amina, right? And I want to put it back together in terms of making the two work with what Tapiwa said, right? In the sense that, you know, first of all, that vulnerability, you know, women need to almost give the men the ability. I said to myself recently, right, that my daughter is looking at my husband. And imagine in, in about, uh, let's say, 15 years' time, right, when she starts looking at men, she's not going to get in a relationship and she's going to put her dad's standard that has been 30 years' work. Yeah. Thanks to me, right? <laughs> <laughs> My 30 years' work and labor, right? And she's going to put that on her guy that's just starting his journey now, right? Mm. And it's almost like she's going to see this husband that is ooh la la because she's looking at her dad. Meanwhile, I have to educate her and let her know, don't put that pressure on that guy because your right, dad right. wasn't that way right. when I first met him when I was 19. Mm. And so that's that's something that I think that's a true because it's a learning and being loving and gracious enough to let people, you know, be able to grow in that position as a leader. You're not, you're not born a leader. It's something that you learn. But I also feel like Come that on. vulnerability needs to come from men to say, especially not in public maybe you know but to the spouse and the people that they're raising their kids with you know to be able to say i think that men are not don't do that i'm learning i don't know what i'm doing so what happens is the frustration when from women's point of view when women men walk around like they know what they're doing and they're flopping i said you're thinking older than a minute you ain't ox to help but you're really are flopping so how do i and i think that's that's the case and when you talk about the, the cultural aspect of you know what I mean? It says that when we, for example, learn certain things, like we talk about um, parents' evening. My my mom never went to one parents' evening. My dad wasn't around. Um, but then, and, they, and then they would go around, they would be paying, they would be screaming around for light bills and stuff like that in our house because it was so, you know, it, it was so um, expensive for them because they were taking three jobs just to keep the family afloat. When I'm here and my kids have all the light on in the house and my mom comes in, and she literally with the same mentality going around each room switching off lights and we don't have that challenge and so it's important for me not to begin to continue to do like what amina says and my husband what our parents did because they had that pressure of being first um, generation immigrants or second generation immigrants having issues in terms of society that we don't have today and so my husband can be around for my children and in their everyday life i can be around for my kids i can't i can't let go of the small stuff and enjoy the, the the things that make them happy. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so it's so important that I feel like the, the two must blend together in terms of letting the past go, you know, and then the men being vulnerable and the women also giving grace for the men to, to begin to walk in that 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 role yeah. that God has created them for them for them to walk in. Yeah. And I even oh. had to say that a lot a lot of a lot of us are not trained, like you're saying, you know, we ladies will listen to ladies to understand how a man is like men are listening to men to understand what a woman is like that's a point that's a point we're not being really educated from the right source <laughs> we, we, we need to have some men in some of IGOGW conferences some that's of our it <laughs> but I will almost also say that the church and we should doing a better job for growing up there was like 20 different women's events in the church in a month Teaching the woman how to be submissive. But, but, no one was the men. but there was no, no one, one no, event for the man telling them how to be a leader because you can't win it for your whole life. The woman is exactly. a child. She's going to get a dream. I'm sorry. Oh, my. <laughs> That is absolutely awesome. We're going to pause right here for this week's Spotlight. The Spotlight is where we show the amazing things that you are doing in our community and our, our community as Christians. So pay attention to the next video. My name is Yusuf Jaga. I go by Twins Daddy and T on Instagram. And that's essentially because I have three kids, twins and their older sister. They're relatively close in age. So essentially they're like triplets, but that's a story for another day. Um, so Dad Acknowledged was actually derived from a personal standpoint um, because things escalated really quickly. It went from a family of two doing love in Tokyo to a family of five and looking for a space wagon for a car um, to fit everybody in. And what I identified throughout the process, the pregnancy process, is a lot of focus went on the mother of the child, rightly so. However, 
guys weren't accounted for, the father of the child was, wasn't accounted for, wasn't acknowledged and barely had any, any say. Um, there wasn't really anybody kind of saying, okay, yeah, you're doing a good job or there wasn't really anybody kind of acknowledging your standpoint. So um, that's where that acknowledge was birthed from. I randomly just picked a day, picked a dad and said, you're doing an amazing job. You are seen, you are heard, you are acknowledged. Um, and it made a difference in a lot of the dads I've connected with. Like I've been able to meet people overseas, um, connect with people in just different parts of the world um, that might share what I've gone through or could possibly relate to the season man I'm in. Um, and a lot of dad was, dads were really appreciative of the fact that somebody was reaching out to them and showing them and letting them know that they are truly acknowledged. So that's what I use Dad Acknowledge to do. That's what my page is about. I share my life. I share what I teach or what I learn, sorry. Um, and essentially what I do is I learn, I grow, I teach and I repeat. Um, and I do that through my lifestyle, through, through the things that I ch share and through the people I meet and have the opportunity to encourage and just share stories with. So yeah, happy Father's Day, everyone. Um, dads, you are seen, you are heard, you are acknowledged. Um, Guys, that was awesome. Please follow Twin Daddy and T on Instagram as he goes about acknowledging the great works of fathers. We see you and we indeed acknowledge you. So guys, before the spotlight section, we were discussing the role of the church on preparing men to be men, preparing men to be fathers. And the ideology of that, we have 22,000 women's conference and maybe, if you're lucky, that one <laughs> man's conference for the whole entire year. So it's got me thinking about um, the training of men and we talk about in Titus 2 that older men will train younger men the same way as older women will train younger women and people look at other male figures in their lives to help them become men. I think Stefan was saying earlier about looking up to uncles or older cousins or friends who have had children and learning from them. So what does it mean to or what does it look like to have other men train you or the need for other men to train you? What does it mean to have spiritual fathers and what role do they play in making you men? Um, yeah, so I think I think for me, the, the interesting thing, right, is that I, I personally feel like we don't have enough training um, in, in, the, in the sense of, you know, actually actively, intentionally looking at doing that training. But what we do have is a whole lot of training because any child or young person they don't learn from being sat down and someone saying to them, right, I'm going to train you now and this is what we're going to do. They're just looking around and seeing what's going on and they're soaking that in the whole time. Yeah. So whatever behaviours they're seeing, whatever attitudes they're seeing, you know, that's exactly what they're learning. Um, and I think somebody said it earlier about, you know, when they were growing up, that's what they saw. And then therefore that's kind of what you start to become because that's just what you're seeing. So we are all training our young people all the time, whether we realise it or not. And, you know, that's why it's important for us to be upstanding. Of course, you know, uh, you know, we all fall short and all the rest of it, but it's important for us to be upstanding because someone is watching the whole time. You know, those young people around us, our kids, our, our nephews, um, grandkids even, grandkids even, they're watching and they're, they're learning from what we're doing. You know, even if we're not sitting them down and saying, right, today I'm going to teach you about, you know, how to be chivalrous and how to be, how to treat, you know, a woman in a relationship. But they see how you talk to the women around you, whether it's your wife, your partner, your sister, your mum, whoever. And anytime you're giving any of them bad energy, they're thinking, oh, okay, that's how I treat women and that's how it goes. Yeah. Right. You, you know, Even just the, No, Joel, go on, please. Yeah, just to contribute with that, you know, um, in, in my in my household, because growing up, I didn't grow up fully with you fully with my um my dad. So when I got to like sixteen and my mom um we married and um eventually having that that's a whole conversation for another day, but you know, having to now grow understand, <laughs> you know, ex accept the role of a dad and then now to understand how to grow like a man, you know. Um one of the things you used to tell me a lot was remember the son of who you are and it used to stick in in my brain, you know, because it's it's a thing of like you you can never lose your um that statement allows you to always remember your identity and also remember who you're representing 
and mm. and and also like like you were saying about how you act to to um to your wife or to to, to women a lot of nowadays a lot of the um, uh, um we're used to hearing our generation talk and then we just we just follow and obey now if you talk something and you don't show me at least twice you're out they call you an outright liar now and so it's a thing of like we have to be so accountable of what we do as as uncles like myself and you know it, nearing fatherhood that everything i say that i want my nephew to do i need to actively make sure am i doing it? am i saying clean up and make sure this place is neat that i'm the same person that's leaving stains in the kitchen never you know never never clean up around the house so it's a lot we have to be really accountable to um i think to heart as well to say what do we want to see in the future you know and we can take that upon ourselves and say look for my own vicinity my own um family this is what i want to see and, and portray because the um i love this there's a quote that jordan um jordan peterson says you know he says if you want to change the world he says lay your bed mm. Come on. Come on. wow come on, come on. No? Please, please start small start with where you are yeah that's it that's it I mean, and, yeah. and that's, the whole truth of the that's the whole truth of the matter. I mean, I was looking into what you just said, Joel, and what and what Tap said as well, because it's like, as I said, I grew up with my parents, and before my parents were married, um, my dad had children prior to meeting my mom and being married to her. And although it didn't cause a complication within our family or their marriage, I grew up thinking that wasn't right. Like, you understand what I mean? So again, what type of thing I have seen by example. So I said to myself, regardless if I was a Christian or not, I didn't want to have children before marriage. Wow. And, and I understand what the Bible says about it. So as I said, regardless if, I'm, if I was a Christian or not, I saw that, again, it didn't leave a negative impact in my family because of these outside children, dare to say, but it just, I thought, well, that's not really the unit, that's not the unit that you're looking for. You understand what I mean? So I, I, made, I made a decision Although I saw that that was what was laid down before me, I made the decision that, yo, that, that's, that's not for me. You know what I mean? And I feel that even sometimes it could have been a negative situation. And, and we, we, I think in many situations, it can be a negative situation. But I feel like even sometimes when things are positive, it's about, actually, I don't really want that for me. You understand what I mean? So it's a, you're, yeah, you're yeah. Talking about the, the, the children see and they learn by the blueprint, which is set before them. But I'm I'm counteracting that and saying that sometimes the blueprint the blueprint is set, but it's about identifying if that's what you really want or not. I, I yeah, so, you're, so you're learning from that in the in the reverse, right? Yeah, because a lot of what I'm hearing a lot from men is that you're you're learning by observation, right? You're you're seeing things that you know your dads or or uncles or whoever are doing. Um, but there isn't the role of an active mentor in your in your in, mm. in your lives, and this is the thing that I find that a lot of guys that I know don't seem to have an active mentor, like somebody who they actually, you know, like you said, tap it well before. You know, a lot of times men are just winging it. You know, they're trying to lead, and they're like, I don't really know if I'm getting this right or wrong. Um, but at what point, as a leader? Do you actually say, okay, I'm actually going to submit to somebody who can keep me accountable, someone who has that experience, somebody who yeah. does, who actually is at least showing me a good example that I, I I want to emulate, even though I'll adapt it for my own family and I'll you know do what's relevant for my family, but somebody who can actually pull me aside and say, nah, you can't. This is not how it's supposed to be. And it's not. Sometimes that's not actually your biological father. That is, you know as we are in church like there is maybe a spiritual mentor somewhere that's that's maybe your pastor that's maybe somebody else but i feel that not enough men have that in their lives like that conscious decision of going and submitting themselves to the the leadership of somebody else that can just help guide them and help you kind of make better decisions as the leader of your own family and your own home what do you think about that then like i would say what sarah's saying is um important i think that's what i was trying to drive the importance of spiritual leadership and do men place that emphasis on having a spiritual father and what um what's that role and what is the role of the spiritual father versus your biological father if he is present who has more dominant in your life are you actually speaking to any of them to develop for you as men 
You see, my husband, my my husband, right? We have a spiritual father, and I remember he was saying something recently that he was like, "Can I be honest with you?" He says, "I think a lot of women, a lot of women, are dealt badly by men because of the simple fact they allowed men who are under no authority to stay around with them. So it's not that they're bad people; it's just that there was no accountability. And so he was like, "Listen, it's not that I'm. I, it's not that." Um, I'm, he was saying about himself that I'm a great, I was a great young man, right? But I just knew that I feared men. One was his father, um, and then, then there was his spiritual father, and he respected them. And he knew that if he acted up, Mimi is going to pick up the phone. She's not going to stop him in no silence, and she will pick up the phone and call those men that are respected. But then he would say something that there is something about becoming a man that when the, the your your wife or your fiance picks up the phone and now calls the man who is training you or has trained you to say this guy is acting up that, that there is a disappointment that a man who has been under authority just doesn't want to to experience and so yeah. that 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 expectation from his spiritual father and his biological father was was set upon him and that's actually what scared him to be a, a man that was worth it because he had a point to prove to them that he'd become that they didn't waste their time training him basically like it wasn't an embarrassment, an embarrassment. Um, and I think that's so key because when men don't have that then it takes a lot for a man to say to himself and, and kudos to the men are doing that right but it takes a lot for a man to say to himself I'm going to do the right thing just because because how many people do the right thing just because many people do the right thing because there's an accountability that that is over them to say that they can't do that, that they shouldn't do the wrong thing. So I think that's a really, really, really important thing. And if you realize that this is this is not a shade to men, but if you realize, you know, the, the Bible where and I think it's Matthew chapter eight, where the man came to Jesus and says, Oh, um, speak a word over my daughter, she's ill. And then Jesus said, Let me come to your house and say, Don't come to my house, right? Because I'm a man under authority, yeah, right? So he understood that. But you have a lot of men today who want to lead and like leading, but they don't like to be under authority. And I tell you something, right? That's something that needs to be worked on because pride kills and destroys. Yeah. And that ability not to sit under, I, I, I think it's something that women should watch out for, right? When they're just about dating, and men should work on, on really kind of developing when you have a problem you have a problem with your pastor you ha always have a problem with your boss you always you're when you have a problem with authority yeah. right then you yeah. can't really demand leadership yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah there's a saying that says you can't you can't be a good general unless you're a good soldier first That's right it. you know you, you right. have to be able to submit to that authority to someone else's authority before you can actually go and be somebody in authority yeah. and sometimes you've got to do both at the same time yeah, very yeah. good. In fact, in fact, most times you got to do both at the same time. Yeah. I well, you know, just what, even... Sorry, go on, John. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, bro. Oh. <laughs> 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 See, these, these, these are the, the men of nowadays. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to interject quickly. I'm going to interject really quickly, John. So basically what I was saying is that, but again, it's about, for example, like we were talking about the men leading by example. Like I take it upon myself for the for the things that I that I didn't get from my dad. No, 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 no knocks to him. He done the best he could with what he could with what he knew. And I remember again, we're dealing with we're, we're talking about we're talking about cultural differences. We're yes. talking about that again. We talk about a second generation or first generation of of um of Im immigrants from the Caribbean or from Africa. So it, it's very their, their upbringing was very different. But I learned that there were there were there were holes there was flaws in what I was taught. Oh. So I had to kind of pick things up as I was going. And yeah. I'm not there yet, but what 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 I've decided to do, what God's given me is that, Steph, you need to teach the younger ones below you. So when I see mm. a brother in church that's looking away, I'm like, yeah, he's going through this. So then I go and speak to him and say, bruv, what's going on? And they might not open up straight away, but is, as a man, I feel like it's my duty to go and be there and be like, you know what, you might not have got that teaching that I got. Or there yeah. might be something lacking in your life that I could spot, and I'd be like, you know what? Come, let's let, let's go for a coffee, let's go for a drink, let's talk about it, let's go eat, let's 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 talk about it. What is it that, that's what you're going through? And before you know it, it's something that you know that that they wasn't taught, or something that they didn't understand how to conquer or to get through. So I feel like it's very important 
as you were saying about that man being that man, having that mentor. So I think it's it's it's, it's really fitting and it's really timely that men, as men we stand up and we start to become that role model without being egotistical. So it's not about I am the man and alpha male. No, 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 no. It's about being there. Like I am here. Call me if you're struggling. Yeah, yeah. is that having that accountability? Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. Can I, can somebody, somebody mentioned. Sorry, real quick. Somebody mentioned about um, the act of you know being submitting yourself to mentorship earlier. But I think that the, the, for me, anyway, my experience or my observation is that sometimes it's having the mentors easily available. Right. Because it's fine that I, I need someone to mentor me. But if no one, like you said, you're spotting certain things where I'd be like, you know, let me reach out to that person because you're looking around and you're seeing what's going on. But if nobody's doing that, then people are just floundering yeah. because the, 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 me, the mentors aren't available, make themselves available to, to the mentees. Do you know what I mean? And you can't have one without the other. And it's important right. that for us, we're actually yeah. actively going out there to, to be active mentors to, to those who need it. Right. Yeah. You can go back to what um, Mimi was saying. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'll I, I just say this in, in like two seconds. You know, there's, no, like, no. There, there, there's, there's so much ladies things being thrown up, thro um, thrown up there. Women's training, like there was so, growing up there was so much about bringing girls together you know, all these different camps and stuff like that. But then now it's up to the men to now throw it out there and say, look, men, this is what we can do. Here is this program. Here's like, what could, what could and, But man, them, man, them, do we, do we turn up though? Have we got more, other, more important things to do? <laughs> yeah. right, just, put, just put it on the table. Let's just let's just have a real conversation here. <laughs> he came for, you came for the you came for the jugular. Wow. <laughs> what what, what, what I want to say that men 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 are not men aren't just born ignorant. You know, like really and truly, you know your left from your right. You, mm. you can see. You, you understand like that. So all of us men here, we we I'm sure we must have seen and known. People that have grown up in gang, grown up in um, whether we doing scams, but we didn't decide to go that way, Stop. even though we. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing. Sorry. Yeah. You know, but we 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 know the difference from left to right. You don't go and put a mm. right foot, right foot, and a left foot. So mm. I think it's also like with Stefan saying, carrying that mentality of being assertive with the guys and saying, look, because I think men are not taught to be really how to be emotion emotionally strong. Mm. Mm -hmm. So we, we can't balance, like for certain men now, if, if a guy just, if you're trying to um, help a particular guy in church or that you know in your area, if he starts shutting you down once or twice and he tells you, shut up, man, go to, later, <laughs> you, you, you give up because you're like, I, I'm not there for it. But a woman is like, no, come with me, darling, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> I'm there with you. I'm there with you through the fire. I don't even know you, but I'm there with you. Like, you know what I mean? Yes, yes, <laughs> no, do you know I want to ask a question right to the guys now? This whole mindset of the alpha male is it biblical? Is it biblical? I feel well, that well, what's what, what's an alpha male? Sorry, Go ahead. I've had different conversations and everyone always <laughs> says it slightly differently. So, so when we say alpha male, what do we actually mean by that? The what is an alpha male? Ooh. I think I. I I mean, for me, when we say about alpha male, right, we totally typically talk about the strong man that leads. You know, he doesn't take no nonsense. He 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 owns his bread. Yeah, he he's out there, but there's no vulnerable side of him. He's just he's just an alpha male. He's a man's man. That's the mentality. He's a man's man. Is that biblical? No, <laughs> no, it definitely no. isn't. It isn't. It's not biblical. And I feel that that's where we've mixed. The Bible and society to make it be we we to, to depict something that's not that's not real. I feel with that that the picture Ste is like Stefan. I'm really sorry. I'm going to cut you. Was Jesus an alpha male? I was just about to say that. This is this is the way that we are. Right. I feel like Jesus. I feel like Jesus. Right. In terms of what society calls alpha male, he tears no. down that whole thing completely. When the Bible says right. Being God, being the head, being God did not think it robbery, right? To be God, he, yeah. he didn't question yeah. his position, but he tore that old whole thing down because of the sake of the ones he loved. Came down on earth, suffered death, 
the most shameful death for the purpose of using his position of, of, of leadership as an avenue to show his love and his sacrifice for the ones that he liked, didn't care about his reputation, how he looked, came suffered, right? Just so that he could gain me and you. So you can take your alpha male somewhere. I don't want it. <laughs> like no, but at the same like time, it didn't, it didn't stop God from Jesus from being strong. It didn't stop him from facing right. the people when he, he needed was to weak. Talk to right. However, I feel like men have this mentality of a man's got to be. But if you look at the example in the Bible, because this is the example, Jesus lost that reputation whenever it was necessary for the ones that he loved. And I think men we need to realize that because for example a man will be like, I will never carry my wife's bag. And I'm thinking to yourself, well, if that's what tells her you love her, right, you can't just shut it down. You're not gonna it doesn't take away your manhood just carrying a woman's purse. And but that alpha male man Mentality, right? Is is such a big thing. I'm not saying men should go carry their their girlfriends or their wives' bags <laughs> or anything like that. But I'm just saying that mentality. You ask yourself that firm no that you have and that firm personality that you have. Is it actually building or is it destroying? Because mm. ain't nobody questioning it. Unless, unless let's not forget that certain occasions when Jesus had to, like he he would kick off, like he would go he and go flip over people's tables and go and cuss people out. You but know, he because he was Jesus, he probably wouldn't 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 slap people and, and punch them up as such. But like <laughs> verbally, through through his actions and through showing people, you know, a, a different way to what they were doing. To me, he was doing exactly that, right? He wasn't, you know, he wasn't Mike Tyson in people, but he was showing them a different way. But you know the thing I, mean? I so, find is that, but this is the thing I find. I find that Jesus, right, was being that to the people who he was, to, to, to the Pharisees, to, the, to in a sense, I don't want to say the word enemies, but they were enemies of his kingdom. They were taking sure. what God had and they were now destroying it. And he had a passionate dislike for them. But yeah, I find yeah. I got to his people, to his his disciples to Mary and to all those people, he had a vulnerable side, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And I find that a lot of men are vulnerable to outsiders, to those who don't wish them well because they're trying to, I don't know what it is, but then to their wives, to their children, then they become, become an alpha male. And That's I feel it. like you need to be a vulnerable at home to your children and to your wives. And then when you're going to try and get your bread into your hustle, then you'll be the alpha male out there. Do you understand what I'm saying? Anything that's trying to attack your vision, right? Then you'll be the alpha male. You'll be strong there. But don't be strong to the ones who you're supposed to be showing the greatest level of love, grace, and mm -hmm. understanding to. I hear that. That's amazing. And we just got to thank Jesus for that demonstration of character. And I pray that. I, that you guys continue to emulate what Christ, what Christ showed, what he showed in the fact that he was that that strong man, but also that vulnerable man to those who loved him. We want to thank everybody for joining us on today's show. It's been an amazing conversation to understand the role of a man, to understand the role they play in the house, the fact that God created them first, and that is actually the position that they need to play. We just have to thank those who are walking in that position and daily submitting themselves to leadership, to authority and retraining are not conducive in their current situation, in their current family, in their current society that they're in today. And we can only pray that God will continue to reveal the truth to them about who they are and what is expected of them. And we just thank you, Lord. We know that you are doing amazing things in men's life and we just continue to commit them into your hands, praying that you continue to lead them. Thank you guys for joining us on today's show. We will see you again next week at 11 a.m. on YouTube. Make sure you tune into this conversation. Join in in the conversation. Drop comments, drop questions. We love to hear from you. If you have any prayer requests, if you have any comments or anything that you want us to elaborate on, please email us at info at mimiojala.org and make sure you follow us on all the other social media platforms. The information will be on your screen green now and yes we'll see you again next week take care and god bless bye